Pulsion's gonna pick up soon. Volume's gonna start to thrive, and we definitely want to stay informed. So I'm not opposed to doing emergency meetings, just you know, calling in the spaces. With awesome, a tri yeah. trickle down effect of uh, the rewards or something. So like a, a, a portion of like the ink minor rewards gets trickled down to the P die one, you know, and then he's gonna do a Pulse X one next, and he's gonna launch a support token next. All of them will trickle down to keep all the miners running longer, which mm -hmm. is great tokenomics. Right. And I think it's also cool because it's kind of a nice way to secure that. Let's say one of those moonshot miracles 10 years down the line, P dies at a dollar on Pulse Chain. Pulse would be difficult. Pulse X is possible, but I think it's going to be INC first because INC going up in increases buy pressure on all the others because people want to buy, to pair, to farm more. So you know if there's what? gonna be Who any manipulation that pushes a price a coin up, it's gonna be INC first for sure. Call me crazy, bro, but E Hex, I think, could do a 10x before ink <laughs> other 10x. I mean if it does, it's gonna be like a it's gonna be a, a bull trap. Literally, it's just okay, well, how, um some argue it has to first. Yeah, some argue right? that if heck e hex doesn't go to parity with p hex then the whole pool's chain ecosystem is failed that doesn't make any sense though i mean like if that's true then why 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 would he ever go around saying that like he, he's pretty much written off yet he hasn't though when he actually yeah he that's the thing he didn't he just said the okay that's a decided. that's a little piece of alpha i do want to talk about from the pulse chain conference in amsterdam yeah, maria so made it a point maria made it a point to get hexy including anyone who mentioned anything about him saying that, that he didn't actually say that. He, it may no. have sounded like he hinted it, but he never actually said it. And no. Maria made it a point to make sure Hexy admitted on stage, on stream, that Richard Hart never said that word for word, that Ehex is dead or Ehex is anything like that. Maybe he would yeah, mention I mean, that I don't remember talking about it like that. He, he, he definitely told people to forget about it, which I guess could be a misdirection. He, he, no, he, he, he also didn't, didn't say that, man. He didn't say any of that. People reacted emotionally to what yeah. Someone needs to just bring up the quote and read it. Because Bro, whatever he said, the it was day, pretty he said clear the that he was telling people it's trash. Not Ehex. That's all he said. He said it looks like the market has chose P hex. He, he said the market e will decide, and that's very true in every coin. The market will always decide. Hex totally missed the math, right? And until they get to one to one, they're going to be offset. Yeah, and what is basically for hex right now? The most economic option is Pulse Chain because of the fees. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If the fees, when the fees reduce on it, that'll be, an, that'll be a more economic option over there as well. <clears throat> but man, the fees and have been insanely low recently. Crazy low. Well, Sonny, what, what coin do you think is going to, um, which RH coin do you think will do a 10x first? Versus what, the dollar? Uh, yeah. Because like, you know, there's definitely different 10xs, but versus the dollar, <laughs> it'll be ink. Okay, For sure. sure. So everyone thinks <laughs> I think, an, yeah, that's... I mean, that's another thing is I'm not super knowledgeable about, I wouldn't say I'm not knowledgeable about liquidity, but there's people who know so much more, aka like Sonny, you obviously must talk nonsense I when you know so much. Speak. But here's, here's <laughs> the thing, all right, all right, and like, I'll, I'll do this step by step just so people listening can do it too, right? Like, go deck screener, go search, do ink, should pull up V1, Pulse, 27 mil, click on that one, and then throw it on the one day chart. And just look at 2024, right? So we went from 50 cents to $10 back to $2, right? So if you click it on Pulse instead of USD and then put it on 2024, you see that we went from 8,000 Pulse to 50, 60, and we're just holding there. So, like, it's really funny watching all these people be like, the bottom on ink is in because when you look at the dollar value, yeah, we're at the bottom of that chart, right? And we're actually still dumping. But if you look at the goal, it's been up the whole time. So that's kind of why I say before, like, your 10x versus a dollar, yeah. Incentive will definitely 10x versus a dollar before the other ones do. Because it can hold this versus pulse and change dollar value. And when pulse flips around and starts going up, it can fly. Okay. Yeah. I do believe ink is the best. Um, it will be the best way to actually onboard 
people as well because if the reward token is at a nice price and at a high price, that could potentially attract more whales to come over here and to provide liquidity on pool's chain. Just the uh, Pulse Pulse X in the farm V1, right? It shows that it's the lowest APR, but it's actually the strongest farm. I, I'd, I'd go as far as to say it's, it's the strongest, uh, most profitable, and most backed farm probably in all of crypto. And reason being, right, Pulse and Pulse X, they stay together pretty close, right? Like, yeah, we do two to one, three to one, four to one, back and forth. It's like two to one or something right now or whatever it is. But ultimately, their their liquidity is so thick, unless, you know, God Whale moves a lot of Pulse into the other one, you're not really moving one price or the other without millions and millions of just straight up Pulse to Pulse X. Right. They run together. So you're in permanent loss, very, very low. It pays out ink. You're getting your rewards there. And then what people don't see in the background is the more sacrifice tokens that have never traded that get sold that go into liquidity you actually are getting more tokens in those liquidity pools too so even though you're not getting the trading fees you are actually getting more tokens when we go down like this the oa like i think last week trying to help the ratio between pool sex and pools yeah 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 i mean so without actually digging just looking i mean look at the year chart and i mean i i there's not a doubt in my mind that he hasn't controlled it to some extent right like right we've hit a 2x and we've hit a third 66 percent down and we just range in there like we haven't really done any big movement on on that scale and what it does is just pay liquidity right liquidity providers just get it up or down left or right it doesn't matter so like sideways for a year yeah, and then right back up like when we get the sack we're basically back at something. <coughs> but anyone in liquidity is going to be like holy my liquidity pools are four or five ten times the size that they were when i made them at sack price you know mm. yeah man there's all kinds of cool shit going on with that like from what i've seen and i don't know how much you know about this sonny probably more than me um is the stable swap upgrades they're looking to do to pulse x but it's funky like it's a funky adjustment they're making and one could presume it's to do with things like pulse x and pulse and the two hexes and stuff like that would be very interesting and i suppose one of the main things about being able to make something like that work is being able to control enough of the supply and how the market moves very interesting and you know rh getting in bitcoin early i'm sure you got an lp early and figured that shit out you know 10 15 years ago so like he's got the experience and balls to do it and knows how to swing a big enough bag to run it right and he's got a big enough bag to run this ecosystem even without us seeing and yeah you know we wait till sec we wait till all that shit's in the clear and then i don't really know what stops any of it well i mean nothing really stops it unless they can prevent him moving the money so either he goes to prison or they somehow manage to freeze all of the wallet because as long as it doesn't do you know what i mean as long as the money can move it doesn't matter what happens with the court case that's why i'm not really fussed to the court case i'm like everyone's like oh you know ethereum is not security so pulse chain's not security or something. it doesn't matter if they really want to come they'll just move the goalposts. like it's not that hard that's what they do sure. like so <clears throat> like focusing on the outcome of the court case yeah it will be bullish to win but ultimately it doesn't matter because he can move that money or someone can do it for him do you know Absolutely. what i mean and i mean to the extent honestly like i agree it doesn't matter like i made a lot of money on the way down and you know it's not going to stop me on any chain like trading is trading 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah interested i think the yeah, everyone's trading just... of the spot etf next week or the week after is going to be interesting too like to see if there's an immediate impact right because spot means buy on spot right as opposed to the futures etf that already exists so ideally if you do see well not ideally if there is money moving in to the spot etf there that means there's immediately money moving into uh ethereum right so yeah. I'd like to see the impact that has on ETH. I mean, I think a lot of people are waiting for it. So it's like the big ETH thing no. right now. I don't hear no one talk about Teddy Bear. And I love that. Is, uh, have you been? <laughs> nah, not really. Okay. Like, yeah, obviously people talk about Teddy Bear. But if you look at the majority of what people talk about, most people aren't like, they don't, like it exists and they know it's paired and tied to a trope and all. But 
I don't know. Like, no one's like, oh, yeah, one of my biggest holdings is Teddy Bear or whatever. Oh, you know? uh, well, I mean, as far as, like, Pulse Chain's concerned, Teddy Bear's already made it. So, like, DGENs are trying to talk about something that's going to make it, not has already made it, and is a leader on Pulse Chain. Depends on what I made mean, it is. Yeah, Trofa but... ecosystem. Uh, Trofa. Of... And that's, that's the one that slept on the Trofa ecosystem, because all roads lead to Trofa, man. I'm pretty sure that Teddy Bear can outperform Shiba Inu or Pepe, without a doubt. It's it's easily my largest holding on chain. That is crazy. That is crazy. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't expecting you to say Teddy Bear. Were you expecting token A1A? Because <laughs> right after Pulse, its biggest liquidity pool is Teddy Bear. So. <laughs> nah, I thought maybe you'd say a Tropa or PDA even. I mean, so P die, I think, you know, P dies run its course, right? If you caught the bottom of that and sold anywhere near the top, you're like, what's a couple of hundred X's, you know? But mm. like, I think, uh, I think the LP plays there are still killer. Teddy Bear is awesome. No nukes LP is insanely awesome. Um, mm. There's a lot of good plays there. A1A, like, you know, and I'm not ever here to show it out. You know, I don't care if you buy it or not, but like, there's 750 different LPs now over that. And, I don't know that any token ever has done what I'm doing. So I really think it's going to be, I mean, for me, it's awesome to watch. I'm coming up on a year here in, in a month since launch. So like, it's super rad. And, and honestly, I think it's going to do great. going to do whatever the rest of the chain does. Sonny, you're the one that launched Die Hard. Am I correct in that one? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, man. I've got to give you a big respect. That was one of my favorite launches, bro. 100%. Me too. That was one of my favorite launches, honestly. Yeah. The way it went up was beautiful. I think, um, like, what we're doing here and what a trope is doing and trying to teach, like, the, uh, what was it, production standard, right? And it's, like, doing the old school thing and just having one pool, like BSC or ETH, right? You buy, you sell, your price impact, like, nothing matters. You just go up and down, and then it goes to zero, and there's literally nothing there. But <laughs> doing, I forget what Die Hard, Die Hard might have been, like, 20 LPs at launch, so, like, depending on what I held back, let's say 80% of it went to, um, let's just for math say 100%, right? Like there was airdrops and all that shit. But if you have 10 pools and put 10% in each one, when they go to snipe it, they can only get at max 10% if they put like, you know, double, triple the amount of money that's in there. But mm. if they just snipe a normal amount, maybe they get one or 2%, right? And then it's kind of fair. Everyone can get one or 2%. And then whatever they buy above that price impact just gets arbitraged out into the other pairs. So you're actually causing the price like a1a if you try and pump a1a right now like you got to bring 750 pairs with it like you're just going to get arbed out and arbed out and arbed out but you're also bringing the price of those tokens up and since it's all prc copies and little tiny shits like it's it's really supporting those tokens but uh yeah it's uh, <laughs> a1a is going to do some things and there's still 80 percent, like 76 percent or something in burn liquidity so it's still in price discovery really Oh yeah. There's a trick to it. Like A1A and B2B, that's the biggest liquidity pool, 75% ish of both tokens. And that pool receives rewards. It receives reflections. So it's actually getting 76% of the reflections. So it's actually building that liquidity pool faster than it can add it to the dead wallet or make it like a price positive thing, right? It 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 just grows and grows and grows and grows that liquidity. So once Pulse Chain starts to move up, you'll see those tokens will start to trickle out of that. And the, the economic energy and the market cap, it goes into all the other tokens that are with it while it's actually still going up in price. Think? Do you lot think it's going to go above parity or do you think it's going to struggle to even get to parity? I have a strong opinion on WBTC. You talking about WBTC is almost like SKT talking about BTT. Three times. <laughs> I mean, There's Richard my... Hartz literally tweeted and added uh, farms to WBTC. So I don't think it's on the same level I was talking no, about. No, all right. And I feel like if you look at the liquidity of WBTC, recently that's been getting thickened in my opinion. I'll add a little bit to that. And about a half hour ago, someone asked which was going to go to Faraday first, uh, PDI or BTC. And if you pull up a forked BTC and a forked PDI chart and chart them versus each other, you'll notice that they aren't very far off the real world value. It's like, I don't know, it's probably 45,000-ish to one right now. And 
in the real world, we're at what, 60,000 to one? Like we're not far off of actual parity in our little world. So the answer to the previous question from my viewpoint, and I've kind of said this all along, and, you know, we'll put more economic energy to, to certain things. Obviously they'll go first first, but like everything that's paired goes together. And in a race for BTC or PDI personally, I just put the two together in LP and count them as one and hope they both go up. That's yeah. smart guess compared to actual Bitcoin. WBTC, I think there's only like 130,000 in total. So you got to watch that too. And the same way that they were doing collateralized loans and minting and burning PDI, they're doing it with Rat BTC. So like, it's all part of the game and it's all legit as long as uh, you know the oracles are reading the same price and they're getting a fair trade. But all those ETH contracts are still running with those other contracts. And you know that was that's what happened with LUSD. Like it's still happening with Dai. It happened with Rat Bitcoin. It happens with anything that worked. Like Ave still has it. You can trade in your Ave for like fifty different assets because that's what Ave does. Mm. So are you saying that WBTC is mintable on like LUSD's scale? Um, I don't know that it would be on that scale, right? Like LUSD is a stable coin that has these mechanisms that actually allow it to mint, right? Um, with this aspect. Well, you you would you technically you are minting Rat BTC, but on the other side you would be burning P die if you made that exchange through one of these contracts, and that's all they're doing. Like with die, right? They just they're they're collateralized loan, right? So they might send a thousand USDT and get twelve hundred P die, or send a thousand die and get twelve hundred USDT, right? But the one that you send, you're actually burning, and the one that you get, you're it is minting through that okay. contract. Okay. But everyone, obviously, hype and all that shit, they like to focus on the mint and never really the burn, right? So it's like, that's why they do stay somewhat equal. And I think die with USDC and USDT now, I think the other two are 50% are ish. So somewhere in there, that's, you know, with gas costs plus this plus whatever. And a lot of these collateralized loans are at, you know, one to one. 1.5 to 1 somewhere in there right so the math works out and if someone dumps it or sells a whole lot you'll see these guys they'll go in and they'll they'll balance that out basically it's it's just another form of arbitrage and profit making for those that that get the math and the code mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie i didn't even know that fun stuff about pulse chain is when people realize that you can actually mint w eth which is one for one with pulse um like all of Ethereum's here, it all works. And then there's some weird spots where Pulse gets involved. Like the way you wrap Pulse for wrapped Pulse, like PLS for WPLS, you can also do PLS for WETH on Pulse Chain one to one and backwards the other way. No slippage, just wrapping and unwrapping. And that's how you access every liquidity pool and everything that's on Ethereum at the fork. Yeah. So apart from P that, um, what fork are you most bullish on in regards to all of them? Uh, biased, but my personal one is PAX-G. I, I started that as soon as I found it, but I, I basically took over PAX-G and USDP. Like, if you go look at any liquidity pool that has any value, they're all mine. Because uh, no one had touched them when I seen it. I was like, oh, PAX-G is gold. It hit $100. I started messing with it at, like, 50 cents. I think it's at, like, 20 bucks now. Yeah, but, yeah, I'm looking at the chart. I, I, so, like, when you're in liquidity, you get all those tokens, right? So I might have started all of these LPs with like maybe 50 tokens because there just weren't any available, right? And then as more and more people dump them, there's more and more of them in LP, which allows more and more of them to be bought in trade, right? And mm. the other LPs makes the chart go up, even if no one's buying it. So then I went on DBank and I, uh, I called out a couple of people that had a bunch of it. And this one guy, this one whale, he, I forget how much he had, but he came and dumped several thousand of them into the pool and then a couple days later some other guy did the same like there's some pax gwell group that was like yo guys free money over here when it was at like a hundred dollars <laughs> right so like yeah they got the money they took it it's extracting value however those tokens are now in the lp which gives pax g more of a chance to rise on its own and people to own one right and mm. the way i visualize that is kind of like a pendulum swing and you know if you start a pendulum if you have like a marble on a string you start on one side we're still on that downswing, right? We need all of those 
airdrop tokens that kind of come into liquidity. And then that'll be like the actual bottom when they stop extracting free value, right? And then as pulse chain goes up and the value of those tokens go up, they will come to parity just by pulse chain moving up. No one ever has to buy them. So then all of a sudden, when they do become a parity thing and people can actually pair them ERC, PRC, like we're supposed to, then you can actually come over here and trade your ETH tokens on this network. That'll be wild. When gas goes down, it's it'll happen. And if you want to really see it, like if you have a token on ETH that you like, you're going to hold for a long time. Like for me, uh, I, I put some effort into TokenFi, which was what was that? Oh. Um, it was like a Floki launch or something. It was it was one of the big ones. But uh, I bridged, you know, I went and bought it on Ethereum and then bridged it in. And doing that now or in the last year is, you know, 20 bucks, maybe 40 bucks at a high end, 15 if you're lucky on the bridge. But when ETH gas goes up, it's going to be, you know, another 100 bucks or 200, you know, it's going to be ETH prices to just bridge those tokens over. So doing it now is definitely better than doing it later and if you really want to get like like i've bridged out to ethereum too and I, you know like 400 dollars to start an lp over there it's kind of stupid but you know it, the arbitrage works on both sides right i actually what did i launch i was the first one to take ink over to ethereum and put liquidity to it and i think i bridged over uh five thousand in ink and five thousand dollars in pulse or no, yeah, and then I split that twenty five hundred dollars of ink with with wrapped ETH and twenty five hundred with Pulse, so that they would have something to arbitrage. And uh, <laughs> I, I launched the ETH ink pair, and they ran fifty thousand dollars through it in like several blocks. Like snipers were all over it. It went to thirty six dollars. I managed to sell like four hundred of them at like seven or eight dollars, but uh, the five hundred dollars that it cost me to make that pool, I made in the fees in the first block because they sniped the shit out of it, and now it just sits there and. And arbitrages on the east side. So it's sitting there like, oh shit, I'm on the correct space. <laughs> so if wow. you really want to get fun, if you were around a year ago for launch, uh, we had a wrapped pulse, right? And if you bought it on the east side and bridged it in, it gave you wrapped pulse. And maybe a week or two later, I don't know how long it was, but they changed it so that when you bridged in, you got pulse, right? So you had gas. Cause like, I think it was one of, I personally, I think it was one of Richard's greatest chess moves was making it so no one had enough gas to transact on the network except for people that sacrificed for Pulse and not Pulse X. Beautiful. Everyone was screwed at that point, I remember. <laughs> but, so I had bridged out prior to the second wrapped Pulse, and then when you bridge out again, you get the other one. So there's two wrapped Pulses on Ethereum that are the same thing. You can bridge both of them in, but you can only bridge one of them out. So one of them is kind of limited to supply. But uh, I think I have like 200-ish million of each paired against each other. So zero and permanent loss. And whenever we get decent volume, uh, I, don't know, I mean, on, on like a really violent pulse day, I'll make like a million pulse. On a normal day, I might make like 10, 15, 50,000. But like when there's action, it's like, boom, you know, just trading fees over there between them balancing the two out. It's pretty awesome. You can do the same on pulse with the, the forked wrapped ETH, right? Because they're one for one. So if you pair them in liquidity, the APR hits like 5%. But like, if you're literally just sitting on pulse, then like, yeah, you can you can sit there, you know, you put a hundred bucks in, you can make $5 a year and still have pulse at whatever value it goes. Yeah, arbitrage is crazy. And that's why pulse is just sick because it's all liquidity pairing. I mean, more so than any other chain. One thing I just keep not understanding in my head right so look richard hart was pumping the chain right mm -hmm. a couple months back and then he took out some pulse and he put it into eth did he not did he sort of rotate it in the pulse x or am i thinking of something else yeah but what i'm trying to understand is did he dump on himself like to to be able to bridge out and buy eth i don't think so i think if we saw a, a sack quote-unquote sack wallet do anything it was probably one of the devs or some shit like that but I'm, so where's this whole ETH that he's got come from? That's what I'm so confused about. Was it already in ETH? The man, no, the man used the sacks. Yeah, the die. Yeah, the 170k ETH or whatever it was, um, with uh, die, I believe. Well, most, mostly die. It was a bunch of different wallets that were Yeah, honestly, bro, I've seen Richard, whether, I don't know if it was Richard or not, if it was a dev, but I've seen him sell 
um, and then buy back higher afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I honestly don't know what his thoughts are when it comes to this kind of stuff because, like, it's, it, it doesn't do optimum stuff and it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? I, I don't understand what's going on. Mm. Well, I feel like we're in good hands, like all state, so we're hanging out. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I still, I still think. I don't think he has bad intentions. I think whenever I chat said like my clients, my bosses, they're like, "Oh, when's Richard gonna pump?" And da, da, da. It's like if you had billions of dollars, right, and you had a bunch of people that had expectations, then the best thing to do is make all those people drown really hard. And in hindsight, whenever he just absolutely pumps the chain. No one's gonna give us the whole two. Say we went down for the next year again, like for two years, we'd be straight dead. Everyone would be depressed, and all of a sudden, he just starts moonshotting polls and just doing crazy shit features, blah blah blah. Um, mm-hmm. m- marketing again, all that shit like that. Like we know he's 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 capable of these things, and he does too. So like, just squeeze everybody as, as tight as you can for as long as you can. Have them call you names, all that. Eat it up because you know at the end of the day, you're just gonna you're gonna do the absolute best thing you can. But yeah, he should he should have bought ETH eight hundred dollars though. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. It's just strange. You said Pulsex don't even have any upgrades yeah. yet, man. I think he's been keeping Pulsex priced the lowest out of all of them on purpose because he burns more of the supply while it's at a low price.